welcome back to another video. I'm here with Katana. You can't really see her because she's in the corner here. And Brett is here as well. Uh, Pablo's are currently at my mom's house and Draco's currently at the vet right now because he's getting a little checkup. But we're gonna be doing a little Q&A. I actually had you guys ask me a bunch of questions on Instagram and I'm gonna answer some of like the top most asked questions that I have on there. So without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, so first question. Do Dobermans need frequent screenings for DCM? Yes, they definitely do. So we do annual um, screenings for DCM for both the dogs. We actually go to a cardiologist out in our area. Oh my gosh, they're attacking me. Um, if you guys didn't know, Dobermans are prone to something called dilated cardiomyopathy. I'm not gonna get too much into what DCM is into this video because it's gonna, this will be like an hour long video if I did. But the short answer is yes, Dobermans do need annual screenings for DCM. At our cardiologist, we usually do a echocardiogram as well as a Holter and it costs around $2,000 per dog annually. So it is very expensive. Dobermans are definitely not cheap dogs and it is just something that needs to be done just to catch DCM um, in the early stages. And if you guys didn't know this, DCM actually affects over 58% of Dobermans, which is literally almost 60%, which is so scary. So it's really important that you guys are diligent and responsible Doberman owners. All right, next question. What's it like owning two of the most intense working dogs, specifically a Malinois? And someone also asked me, it's like kind of the same question. Always thought Mal's were difficult to own. What's your take on owning one? So owning, let's start with owning both together. So they definitely all require, um, you know, a lot of work of their own. Uh, Malinois are definitely more, what's the word? She's more clingy and she's also very needy. As you can see, they're both extremely needy breeds. I honestly did not know Malinois would be this needy and clingy, but literally Brett is attached to me at the hip. So are all my Doberman. So I literally have like three dogs following me around the house at all times, but Mal's, are definitely more difficult to own. This is just speaking with my personal experience with them. If you guys do not know what you're doing with the Malinois, they will definitely take advantage of that like by far compared to the Dobermans in my opinion. Um, with the Dobies, yes, they are crazy working dogs, but at the same time, they kind of have a, a better like chill and like on off switch versus Beretta. She is constantly panting. She's constantly energetic and she doesn't really know when to stop. Um, versus like Dobies, they kind of just think a little bit more. Um, for example, when I took uh, Draco and Beretta to dock diving, Draco's just always been scared of the water, but Beretta went like head first into the water. Um, and she was just, she doesn't have like, in her so I mean that could be a double-edged sword to where she's just too um, fearless and she wants to do everything and anything versus a dog like Draco or Katana that kind of thinks before they do um, Beretta kind of just you know does it before she thinks so that's kind of like the main differences um, that I've seen with the two and owning both of them together and, or owning a Malinois versus Adobe I mean they are similar as you know they are working dogs they are both very highly energetic dogs but in my opinion she's just crazier like she's just like a whole nother level of crazy as you can see my dobies i mean they are older now but they are able to chill in the house beretta does chill in the house as well because we did train her a lot as a puppy that the house is like the chill area and she can't go super crazy but if you do not know what you're doing or if you did not proceed or oh gosh if you did not seek professional help um or training then i can see how this dog would be too much dog for a majority of people. All right, Angela Bear asked, how can I find an affordable and reputable trainer in my area? What qualities to look for? So all of my dogs are actually professionally trained by trainers in my area, and they're actually trained by Elevated Canine Academy. If you guys have been following me for a while now, you guys know that that's where I take all of my dogs. And a question that I do get often is how did I find these trainers or what did I do? What did I look for? What qualities did I look for? And the short answer is I have actually, actually this can be the long answer, but I have actually been to two different trainers with Draco when I first got him. And both were, I'm just gonna be honest with you, both are, were absolutely horrible. I feel like I got scammed with my money. It was very expensive. I feel like I kind of wasted my time, unfortunately with Draco. He was kind of like my tester dog, which it sounds horrible, but I honestly did not have a trainer. I did have a trainer in place before I got him. I just didn't know what to look for in a trainer. So this is something that I wish someone was able to tell me. Um, so personally, in the beginning, I'll just tell you my mistakes. I went on Yelp and I just 
typed up dog trainer in my area and this person had like four and a half stars and I just thought they were, you know, going to be good. And as you should, I mean, Yelp should be a trusted place to find uh, dog trainers. But from my personal experience, it was honestly absolutely horrible. Um, he did not the trainer i'm not gonna shout out who it was but he honestly didn't teach draco anything and it was just the biggest waste of money and the biggest waste of time ever and i wish i can go back in time to not have gone through two separate trainers how i founded elevated canine academy is i was actually scrolling on instagram i think they just popped up on my feed and then i actually ended up going to tagged people that have gone to them before or like people that were tagged um so like previous clients stuff like that and i was able to reach out to them via dm and i just asked them what their personal opinion was of this trainer how did they like it so i got to talk to their clients and that's kind of how i found the trainers i have now honestly it just worked out i mean i had a phone call with oscar this was like way back when like years ago when i first got draco but i had a phone call with oscar and it just like Everything that he was saying just made sense to me and then I kind of just was, you know, I told him that I've been screwed over twice. Um, kind of like our history, like my history with like dog trainers and how I was feeling extremely skeptical. skeptical. And he kind of just like assured me that, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, and we just, I just felt comfortable kind of um, talking to him about like my dogs and stuff. And I mean, I guess the most important thing is finding a trainer that you can like really connect with. And also, I mean, do your research, do your due diligence, try to talk to previous clients, see how they like them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I did and how I found the trainers that I work with now. Okay, so Gelly20 or 222 asked, what is the best advice for a first time Doberman owner? So I feel like the best piece of advice for Dobermaners, there's so many things that I can go off about, but I think the number one thing would be definitely seeking a professional trainer in your area to help you out with training because you're definitely going to need it. Um, a lot of people think that Dobermans are like a challenge dog that you should just like try to train on your own and I feel like that's just not a good idea for any owner to go through especially if you ha if you have had never had experience with working dogs before I would highly recommend you seek professional training or go to a professional trainer find one in your area and I guess another big piece of advice is crate train your dog I know it's really hard when you take home a puppy and you want to sleep with him and cuddle with him and have him constantly near you 24 7 but Dobermans are extremely prone to separation anxiety just because they're just known as velcro dogs they want to be around you 24 7 and they don't want to lose sight of you so I think just them learning that separation from early on is extremely important so they don't develop any separation anxiety in the future when they're alone by themselves so crate training is definitely a must okay Frank the Shepherd X and sunbunny.ca asked pretty similar questions and I got a lot of questions like this but it was pretty much how often do you work your dogs and how often do you train your dogs times per day duration etc i'm gonna go with uh frank the shepherd's question a little bit first so how often do i work my dogs my dogs go to professional training as professional training as in club for bite sports we at least try to go at least one to two times a week um recently since the summer months has been starting it's been really hot lately and I've been unable to go since they usually do training at night and I'm like really, really busy usually. So um, I would probably go one to two times a week for professional bite sport training, bite sport training. Um, but as for, you know, daily training um, and like duration and everything, I sprinkle in training throughout the day. So I'm not training my dogs hours on end throughout the day. I'm probably just doing five to 10 minute sessions, three, two to three times a day it's really nothing crazy i usually just give them like a treat or something really quickly and um when i'm about to give them a treat i make them do a couple tricks and just short durations throughout the day makes a really really big difference versus doing one long training session uh per day i feel like dogs and a lot of people can agree that dogs don't really retain information like that very well so just keeping it short keeping it fun keeping it engaging is really important i know a lot of people always think that i train my dogs for like hours at a day at a time and that's just that's so far from the truth all right am dot am dot brew said or asked if i can go back in time what advice would i give myself before growing my pack so i would probably like i would say don't compare yourself too much to what you see online i feel like it's really easy especially with dog accounts or just social media in general it's really easy to compare yourself with other people and you see a lot of dogs doing really really cool things and you're like i want my dog to do that too or like my dog's the same age as their dog how come my dog's not excelling at this or doing that and it's just 
I wish that I told myself that every dog kind of learns at a different pace. I found myself comparing myself to other accounts or other dogs that I see on social media and it's just really toxic and I wish I just took it a little bit slower and had like a little bit less expectations for my dogs, especially when I first got Draco. Um, he excelled in a lot of things, but at the same time, there was things that we were always constantly working on. And I just found myself comparing to like other people, which is not a good thing whatsoever. So obviously now I don't compare as much. And I think it's really important um, for people watching out there that social media, you only see a small glimpse of what people want to show you, but you don't really see the full picture. Um, so yeah, the social media is kind of like a huge, not like a big scam, but I mean, people only show the good parts of things and just try not to compare yourself to others too much. I know a lot of people always comment, I wish my dog was like that. Whenever I post like, like a fancy heel work video, like people always say like, I wish my dog was like that, or I wish they can do this and do that. And honestly, it's all attainable. You know, just focus on yourself, focus on your dog. Try not to stress yourself out too too much because literally that was me like four years ago and you don't want to be in that same place that I was so that was probably my biggest advice if I can go back in time so I did get a lot of questions about Dobies versus Mal's um so Margarita Shots asked for the Dobies versus Mal do I feel like bite work came and obedience came more naturally and how's Breda's drive compared to Draco's long story short Breda is just Nat like more genetically, I guess, predisposed to biting things. Beretta's drive is definitely a lot higher than Draco's. Um, Draco's is still pretty high in my opinion, but Beretta's is just like on a whole nother level. Like she's literally like crackhead 24 seven, but she also knows how to chill. Like right now she's chilling. I barely even exercise her today and she knows how to chill in the house. It's really difficult to compare Malinois with Dobermans because I mean, they're completely different breeds. Yes, they're both working dogs, but it's just, a completely different like level unfortunately but i'm still very happy of draco's growth um i mean he is a doberman considered an off-breed in protection sports and bite sports and everything so he is um he is more than i can ask for honestly yo de Plurway asked is katana a couch potato and why and that's why she doesn't do sports like draco and bretta katana comes from show lines um since we're on the topic of genetics she comes from more show lines um she's a little bit more thicker build and everything and yeah she's just a chill dog i mean she was bred to be a pet um and and she doesn't really have a single bone of like, she doesn't really do much. Like she's just a chill dog. I mean, I can't really ask for more. She's a very chill dog. She's really calm, always neutral, loves other dogs, loves people, kind of just like, she is kind of a couch potato, but she does keep up with Draco. We do do training with her. She just has like basic obedience down. She is awfully trained. She's just overall a really, really good dog. And if you were to ever get a Doberman as your first dog, I would hope it would be a dog like Katana. Like she's just like the perfect, the perfect pet dog there is. Like, look at her. She's just, she's been by my side this whole entire time. Brett is panting because she probably wants to work or something. I don't know. N dot. Ani Annie asked, what sport is the most fun with your dogs and what others would you want to try? I really enjoy doing bite sports um, with my dogs. I feel like it's a really good outlet for them, but that's definitely one of our favorites. Uh, Draco's doing IGP right now. Beretta is kind of undecided. I kind of got Beretta just for, not like for fun, but I didn't really have big, I didn't have like crazy plans for her when I first got her. I knew I wanted to do sports. Um, not sure what we're gonna, oh, Katana, excuse me. On it. I'm not sure um, what sport we're gonna do yet, but right now we're just having fun with like a lot of AKC stuff, such as dock diving. Uh, we're gonna do scent work with her. We're also gonna do barn hunt. Uh, so just like really fun stuff. As for dog sports that I want to try, I mean, we recently just started doing, I don't even consider, I don't know if this is considered a sport, but we started doing confirmation with Draco and he has been absolutely doing, actually he's been doing really, really well. So we started doing a couple of dog show handling classes um, with a professional dog handler. She's an AKC professional dog handler and she's been handling Draco and he's been doing really, really well. Adventure.aussie.cosmo asks, is Beretta gonna do dock diving in the future. Yes, she's gonna definitely do dock diving. She absolutely loves the water. She is like a crackhead for the water. Um, when she sees the dock, she like 
freaking spazzes out and like flips out. She like loves, she loves the water so much. And this is my first time having a dog that likes water and that's able to swim. So it's very, very fun because I do love swimming myself. So having a dog that loves water as much as I do is really, really great. Um, Dobermans in general, just they don't really like water too much. Um, Draco was never really fond of it. So um, it's really fun that I have a dog finally that likes to swim and jump in the water with me. Um, but yes, to answer your question, she is gonna be doing dock diving in the future, um, or honestly soon. She's She's been crushing it every single time. She's only had two lessons so far and she's absolutely loved it. So we're definitely gonna pursue that in the future. All right, last question is from Miranda. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't wanna butcher your life. That is your last name, I don't wanna butcher it, but it's from Miranda. And her question is, will you be dropping any new merch on Hellhounds? <sighs> My gosh, Hellhounds has been like such a fun passion project for me and I love working with Hellhounds and doing Hellhounds stuff for so much. It was honestly one of my first businesses that I've ever opened. And yes, the answer is yes, we will be launching some new merch on Hellhounds. I've just been so freaking busy with Wolf Snacks and it's just, Wolf Snacks has taken up honestly all of my time. So yes, the answer is we are going to um, drop new merch, but maybe within the next few months when things kind of slow down um, with Wolf Snacks. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and answered some of your guys' questions. I tried to pick questions that were asked the most frequently. Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for over 11K followers. I honestly cannot believe my eyes that I made it to this many subscribers. I'm definitely trying to upload more frequently, as you guys can tell. Um, I was really bad with YouTube before, but you know what? I'm, I'm starting to get a lot better with uploads, but thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, also wanted to mention, uh, Beretta has a little rash on the side of her lip, but yeah, before people ask in the comments, what is wrong with her lip? She just has a little rash, but it's going away. But anyways, hope everyone has a good day and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.